Friends, this is Rick Renner, and I'm so pleased that today Denise is going to continue teaching us from her book called Who Stole Cinderella? The Art of Happily Ever After, which comes with a 16-part series, which is called The School of Cinderella. But today, Denise is going to answer the question, is there an answer for my insecurity? And the answer is yes. And today, Denise is going to be speaking to us about how to overcome our insecurities. Let's join Denise right now. I'm so glad that you're with me. I am so glad you're with me. And that, and our first scripture is Proverbs chapter three, verse five. And it says, now open your Bibles. I hope you are opening your Bibles because I've talked to you about your eyes seeing the word of God. And it's very powerful. Verse five says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So he's telling us to trust him to not lean on our thinking and to acknowledge him in the way that we go. And if we do, he's going to direct us. Well, I think that is really great news. And honestly, ladies, I knew that scripture uh, many, many years, but I didn't have a very good understanding of it. And I tended to put my trust um, in other places. And because the devil is a liar, did you know that the word Satan means deceiver? And it also means hater and slanderer. So the devil, Satan, he hates you. He will slander you. He will accuse you in your mind. He'll accuse somebody else in your mind. And he's a thief. So he wants anything good that you have in your life. And then he wants to lie to you about what you do have. So you won't think that you have something good. <laughs> he's such a liar, such a deceiver. And many times he tries to come and get in our life when we're young and to deceive us to think something about ourselves uh, that's really not true or to get our focus confused. And so this is what happened to me. And I realize when I tell my story, that's first probably some of you listening that, oh, you've suffered in your childhood much more than what I'm going to say. But this is my story. And the enemy being the enemy and the hater that he is, he wants to take an innocent, precious little life, girl or boy, and cause them to think the wrong things about themselves and to have the wrong perspective of life. And so this is what happened to me. So uh, my precious father... Um, now he's in heaven. He's absolutely perfect. But my father was, he self-condemned himself all the time. He, he knew Jesus and he loved him as much as he knew how to love him. But he didn't understand that Jesus was condemned for him, that he took his condemnation. So my dad he just kind of felt this heavy weight of guilt or, <clears throat> or sin or that he wasn't enough. And it affected him all the time. Um, my dad, I rarely saw my dad smile. He was a very handsome man and rarely heard him laugh. And, and so, you know, growing up as a little girl, you know, you want your dad to love you, appreciate you, think you're wonderful. And my dad, he just didn't have the ability to, to show that. And so it, what it caused in me, it, 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 it caused me to want to look for that 
to look for that affection because I didn't get it from my dad. So it was like there's a, a big hole in my heart. And, and so now I'm looking for this acceptance somewhere else. And, and some of you may have even had, I'm sure you did, had worse stories. And maybe you looked in, in acceptance somewhere else. Maybe it was in a wrong relationship. Maybe it was in alcohol. Maybe it was in drugs. Maybe it was in a job. Maybe it was in becoming successful. I don't know. When we have missing places in our souls, we try to fill them up. We try to put that expectation on something else because it wasn't met in our parent. And so that's how it was for me. So, so when I got married, uh, then I realized I was still looking for that acceptance. Now I should have put that on God, but I didn't know what I'm telling you. I, I didn't know that. I could actually trust God with my heart. I didn't know that he loved me the way that I know he loves me now and that the way he loves you now. I did not know that. I felt like if I didn't do everything right, that, you know, he, he loved me. I was his child, but, you know, he would just kind of stand a little bit further away from me. I didn't realize how great his love for me was. So I was trying to put that acceptance because see, I'm trying to be accepted. I was trying to put that acceptance on Rick, my husband. Well, I couldn't, that was not working either. My husband, he's a great man, but he's not God and he can't feel the vacuum in my heart. And so I became disappointed. And, and I, I told you about that in the, in one of our last uh, seminars. And, and so in my searching, I, then I learned that God loved me so much. I learned he loved me so much. And, and his love for me did not depend on my performance. He loved me. He looks at me and my spirit. And he sees Jesus and he's completely satisfied with me on the inside. So but I didn't know that then. And I told you that I, I felt like, yeah, you love me, but I'm not sure that you really accept me because I don't do everything right. And I told you that now I have a greater understanding. Well, I came to that greater understanding by my own searching and my own uh, searching of God's word and, and uh, cr crying out to him and going through difficult things. Because you see, when we try to put our dependence on something else, like I did my dad, so that didn't work. Then I tried to put it on Rick. That didn't work. Then we end up disappointed, which I did. But it drew me to the Lord. And I'm so thankful. And what I learned was that I had to get my confidence. This uh, place in me that uh, was broken and needed healing and, and needed to be filled. I had so much lack of confidence. And I had to get my confidence from God. And I want to say that to you. You will not find anything, anywhere, anyone that is going to give you the confidence that God can give you. Because if you're a child of God, God is jealous over you. He wants to be the one who gives you that confidence. And also, you know, if we put our confidence in a person or a thing or success or a job, then we're, if something goes wrong there, then something shakes our confidence. But if you put your confidence in God, well, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He is not going to fail you. 
He's going to be right there. He's going to say, let me tell you, he gave you the Holy Spirit. He'll say, he'll guide you. He'll lead you into truth. He'll lead you into deliverance. And he, he's there for you. Building up that confidence that you and I so long for. And, you know, when you get married, you might say to yourself, well, you know, I'm, I'm so happy for the man of my dreams. And now this man, I know he's so wonderful. He's going to make me happy. I have heard so many brides say, he's my best friend. He's so wonderful. I can share everything with him. And then they get married. And then she starts trying to control him. And he's harsh with her. And then in two years, they're divorced. That is not the will of God. And so we need to, to see that God is the one, only God and his word that can give us that confidence. Now, this scripture that I spoke to you about, Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 5, I want you to look at it with me. It, well, verses 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Well, that's, that's going to take some acknowledging that I trust in this or I trust in that. You know, being honest before God. Some of my most powerful moments with God have been being honest with him. Saying, Lord, okay, this is what I'm doing I am trusting this person and they are letting me down. And, and Lord, I need your help. Lord, I'm sorry that I trusted this job or, or this money or this person or this success. I'm sorry, God. Because your word says that I'm to trust in you with all my heart, not trust in you with a little bit of my heart and then trust in something else, but to trust in you. And I know, Lord, that my heart, it can only be safe with you. I understand that when I put my heart into something else and I trust that, that, that it's not safe. And Lord, I acknowledge to you that I put my trust in this money. I put my trust in my husband. I put my trust in a friend. I put my trust in my children. That if everything is okay with them, then everything's okay with me. If they treat me the way I want them to treat me, then I'm okay. Lord, I realize I've got to look higher and put my trust in you. And so that first verse is saying, trust in the Lord. Ladies, the reason that I'm speaking to you about these verses and speaking lengthy with you about them is because I've meditated and meditated and meditated on the scripture. Because I wanted my trust to be in the Lord and not in other things. Because other things were definitely going to let me down. But God was never going to let me down. And so I meditated. I remember I meditated on the word all. <laughs> it says trust in the Lord with all. How much? All your heart. And then, and as I said, if, if, if I, then I take back part of my heart and I trust in this or that, or this, I would tell him I was honest with him. The next part of that verse says, and lean not to your own understanding. Oh boy, did that verse ever help me? Because I want to lean on what I think. I want to lean on my understanding. I want to lean on how I see the situation. I want to lean on what I think that person should do. I want to lean on that that's not fair. I want to lean on, I wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for them. I want to lean on, 
I can't do this. I'm a victim of my circumstances. I want to lean on. Well, I'm not just, I'm not as special as everybody else. See those, that's wrong thinking. That's leaning on our understanding. Or how about this? Oh God, I don't need you. I, 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 I don't need you because I can work this out myself. I'm smart. I can work this out myself. That's leaning on your own understanding. He says, and lean not. Don't lean to your own understanding. Also, ladies, I want to say, if we're just leaning on our understanding, we are leaning on um, very shaky ground. We are leaning on a something that's not very stable because our emotions, they can change in five minutes. Your thoughts about something can change in two weeks. Your opinion about something can change in five days. Leaning on our, on an, our understanding is like leaning on something that's going to fall through. It's not going to hold us up. And God's saying through his love, through his mercy, he's saying, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't trust it. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me right now. And then it says, in all your ways. How many? In all. In all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. You might say, Denise, why are you talking to us about trusting the Lord? Why are you going over and over this verse? Because ladies, a lot of marriages fail because spouses put their trust in the wrong thing. And it fails. But if you put your trust in God, he will never fail. If you just lean, listen to, uh, depend on your own mental capabilities and your own smarts and your own emotional stability, it's not enough. You've got to lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, there it is again, all, all your ways, all your ways, acknowledge him. Lord, okay, Lord, I acknowledge you. I'm in this situation. What am I supposed to do? God, I'm so tempted to be fearful. And I'm so tempted to be angry but I'm going to acknowledge you right now in my ways, in this place I'm in, I'm going to acknowledge you right now. And he promises right after that. And he will direct your paths. <laughs> God wants us to succeed. You know, it says in John 10, 10, that the thief, the devil, the hater, the slanderer, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So when we trust in him, when we don't lean on our understanding, when we acknowledge him in our ways, and it says he's going to direct our paths, well, then he's going to direct our paths into good. He wants us to succeed. He, he just said, I want you to have life and I want you to have it more abundantly. I want you to have life, life to the max. I want your life to be so amazing that you just say, God, I sure didn't plan this. I sure couldn't have planned this, but you planned it for me to take that goodness from him. You know, ladies, we have to agree with the goodness of God. You have to agree with this scripture that he's going to direct your paths and he's going to direct them into good. 
that he loves you, that he wants to give you life and life more abundantly. And that we cannot misdirect our trust because that's the, because it's not going to fill us up. It's not going to fill that empty place in our heart. It's not going to give you that which you long for, that acceptance you long for. It's not going to give you that. That husband, that wife, it, it's not going to give you that. That job is not going to give you that. That money, that house, it's not going to give you that. Only the Lord and the Holy Scriptures are anointed by the Holy Spirit to direct you, to direct me to this path, to say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you with all my heart. To be honest with him and say, Lord, you know, I'm not trusting you here. Lord, I need you to help me trust you here. Be honest with him. And then to not lean on our own, own understanding, but to acknowledge him. And then as we agree with him, his power and his presence comes to direct our paths. I want to give you one more scripture. And it is Proverbs 29, 25. So look with me in your, your Bible or your iPhone there. And look at with your eyes, Proverbs 29, 25. And look at this verse. It says, the fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. If we fear man, if we're all afraid of what man thinks of us, the opinions of man, um, I don't measure up or I'm not like this person or I'm not as good as that person. If that's part of us, the Bible says it brings a snare. Now, what does that mean? It brings a trap. There's a trap when we fear man. There's a trap when we just believe the opinions of others and then try to change their opinion about us. There's a trap there, and it's not a trap for good. You know, traps are never good. Traps, if you go out in the forest and, and people are hunting for animals and they set the traps, well, they're always invisible because they don't want the animal to see that trap or the animal would not, would not put his foot or his paw into that trap and be caught. They're invisible. And the traps of the enemy, they're invisible. And you may be saying yes to some of them by, by trusting in something else besides God or trying to get your self-image built up by something else besides regaining the confidence that only God can give you through his spirit and through his word. And here's the great news, ladies. When we say, God, I don't have any confidence. I don't have any confidence in myself. I need you to help me. Well, right then, you just open the door. <laughs> you just open the door for heaven to come in there and to show you who you are. That you're accepted by him. You're loved by him. You're gifted by him. You're, you are uh, set apart by him. He called your name. He knows your voice. Nobody else in this whole world of 7 billion people has your voice. No one else in this world of 7 billion people has your eyes or your fingernail print, your fingerprints. No one. Look how special you are. You don't have to try to be anybody else. God made you to be you. And he wants you to have confidence in that fact that he called you. He separated you. He put his power in you. And he's never, ever, ever going to leave you. What a great God. I pray for you right now. 
that you put your trust in him. I pray right now that the revelation of his love, that acceptance that you're trying to get from someone else or something else, that you see you're completely accepted by him, that he loves you, that he cherishes you, that he has a great plan for you. And that if you acknowledge him, he's going to direct your paths into good and not evil. All of us want our relationships to grow and improve. For example, don't you want your marriage to be in better shape than it is right now? Even if things are going well, you probably see areas where it could be improved, right? In this candid 16-part series, Denise Renner hilariously and compassionately reveals areas where all of us can do better in our relationships, and especially in our marriages. Sometimes little changes make big differences. Titles in this series include, Help! My mouth is making trouble for me. Who is in control here? My mouth or me? I thought I was supposed to change it. Help me, Lord. I need to forgive. I thought I had already reached my forgiveness quota. Rick Renner says, this series is so awesome. Every person will laugh their way to transformation as Denise candidly addresses areas where we can all improve. This life-changing 16-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $25. We are also offering you Denise's companion book, Who Stole Cinderella? for just $15 with genuine warmth and candor. Denise recounts the journey of her own struggles in marriage and the unique insights she learned along the way to attaining emotional health and happiness. Your life will be enriched by biblical wisdom as Denise sheds light on your path to happily ever after and shows you right where to begin again if you've lost your way. Don't miss this special offer, the entire 16-part series, School of Cinderella, and the companion book, Who Stole Cinderella? Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, Denise and I are coming to an area near you very soon. On Sunday, August 14th, we're gonna be at Radiant Church with Pastor Lee Cummings in Richland, Michigan. On Sunday, August 21st, we're going to be at Liberty Church in Fairfield, California with Pastor Richard West. On Thursday, August 25th, we're coming to River of Life Fellowship in Seaside, Oregon to be with Pastors Tolbert and Mary Jo Lovelady. On Sunday, August 28th, we're coming to Spokane Christian Center in Spokane, Washington with Pastor Rick Sharkey. On Sunday, September 4th, we're coming to Faith Family Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota to be with Pastors Michael and Vicki Bang. And on Sunday, September the 11th, we're coming to Madison, Alabama to Cornerstone Word of Life to be with Pastor Mark Garver. Please check our website for the most recent updates and information about these wonderful meetings. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.